Hello. I just want to share a workflow. Uh, I'm going to scan one 35 millimeter black and white negative using view scan, import into Capture One. Uh, I'm doing this because somebody said, I'm thinking about using view scan, I haven't heard many good things about it. You, like, I'm somebody who, you know, I'm, I don't know what else is out there, but I use ViewScan very happily. Um, I'll say crazy things like, it's one of my favorite programs. And, you know, there are some other ViewScan fans out there, but also a lot of skeptics. And by no means am I going to try to win everybody over, but this is just like what I do uh, on a very average situation. If I just want to scan one negative, uh, I've used ViewScan with Prime Film, uh, a couple of different Prime Film scanners. Uh, today I'm using the Prime Film XE. I've also used used it with Nikon Cool Scan, fourth uh, like a four thousand. Uh, I've used it with some Plus Tech, a couple of different Plus Tech scanners. Um, and now I'm, I'm mostly using a, a Leica SL2S to do my scans. I like that when I want to do a whole roll quickly. Um, but I still like my Prime Film XE. Um, here, right? I mean, if I just do exactly what I what I do, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow through some of these settings that people are maybe interested in. Uh, so I turn on my scanner first, and then I open the software. Uh, sometimes ViewScan doesn't like it if I try to start the software first, then the scanner. So scanner on, load load the film. Um, well, scanner on, software on, load my negative. Uh, this worked great with batch scanning with my Nikon. I would do a whole roll. Um, but this right here is just going to be one frame. Okay, so my input tab, right? I'm, uh, it's it. I've only got one scanner connected, so it finds it. 35 millimeter film. Uh, it's a black and white negative. Um, I'm going to preview at a thousand DPI, but I'm going to scan at five thousand. <clears throat> I usually scan at 5,000 unless I know it's uh, maybe like a pushed double X where I get about the same thing with 2,500 DPI and maybe I'm in a hurry. Um, all right, when I click crop, right, there is an auto, an auto crop setting. Uh, it's pretty good. You know, you can see here it might not. If I was going to manually do it, I might move those like the tiniest bit. Uh, and then just going through my different tabs. Uh, I like that I can click here, image. I can look at the, the raw um, exposure information on the, on the negative. Well, you know what I've done, and I, you know, I've actually already hit preview. So let me let me redo that. So I'll hit preview. Um, so while while we're waiting, I'm gonna drink my coffee, which is maybe cooled off. And this is the image we're scanning. These are my my boys picked out these pumpkins at the pumpkin patch. Uh, the film we're scanning is. P30. I shot it at um, exposure index of 30. Yeah, you can might say I, you know, they pulled it relative to the development recipes that they suggest. Uh, but I was curious as what if I treated this as a 30 speed film and treated that as box and just did my typical box speed development and. Um, I got results of what I would expect out of kind of a box speed black and white film. 
Okay, so here, you know, I can see kind of the, these are stops, right? So we're basically covering a little more than four stops of, um, of density in the negative. Um, and then, right, and this is mostly what's going to be light values in the image, right, corresponding to a lot of that background. So first I like to look at that raw, and then I'm going to come and look at my curve for the image. And here I, um, I tinker a little bit, you know, I think most nine times out of 10, if I just, if I didn't worry about, um, kind of making the adjustments here and I just imported into capture one and made adjustments there, um, I get about the same thing. But I'd say one out of 10 times, actually, it's, there's a benefit to trying to get in the ballpark of what I'm what I'm after here and then doing kind of final tweaking in Capture One. So, you know, here, I'm the only thing I, I, I see about this is it's a little dark, so I might just bump it a bit. Um, you know, there I might lift the shadows and might pick up the highlights just a tad. All right, I'm in the ballpark, so that's good enough. And I might, I'm gonna, I'd be, you know, whatever, I can crop now or I can crop in Capture One. It's just that tiny little adjustment, so I'll just do it there. Um, my output, right, I, I pick a folder, so I've, I'm sticking it in a Capture po folder for Capture Pro, uh, Capture Pro 21. Um, you only have to do that once, you know, you just, you, you just got to tell it where to stick these things. And I'm going to make a 16-bit gray DNG um, at 500 DPI. And, it, yeah, so we'll hit scan. I'll take you through the whole process. We'll go all the way to uh, posting this photo on a Discord group. So you know, I think the, the user that asked me to do this, I'm calling a user, uh, Discord friend. Um, I, I think he's interested in batch scanning and doesn't want to spend a lot of time with cropping. So I think there is, I haven't played with it, but I do think in these crop settings, there's maybe a way to, um, you still use auto, but maybe have kind of a, a little bit more of an aggressive Kind of edge cropping i don't know haven't played with it you know for me i like to spend i'm not in a big hurry i like to spend time with my photos um and so i yeah i think of cropping as just something i want to do on every every photo um <clears throat> sometimes the preview i get here doesn't look it's definitely not a perfect match to what i get in a capture one there's some DNG defaults I have set in Capture One, and um, you know other factors that come into displaying the image. I don't worry about it too much until I get to you know ready to kind of preview for my final output. Yeah, I just want to make sure I don't um, throw some you know crazy curve or lose lose too much of the shadows or the highlights or something and this is not the fastest scanner right at 5000 dpi it's it's um, it's a little slow i really wish that you know, prime film or, or somebody freaking Leica would create a, a new scanner for us um i really like the workflow of this you know I like picking up my negatives and loading them and uh, i just wish the scans were much faster okay so that uh capture one's little um 
inconsistent with whether, whether it automatically loads it here for me once it's in that folder. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But if I just reopen the folder, let's see. Where'd it go? Maybe it was still saving. Here, I have to try to find it. There it is. All right. And yeah, then another reason I kind of like to do final crop in Capture One, because I feel like it wasn't quite what I saw in ViewScan. All right. So here, I mean, it looks a little more contrasty than what I was seeing, so I'm going to back the contrast out. Yeah, this photo is actually like, I think I got the exposure right, the development was good, I, I don't need to do a lot of editing. And I don't want to if I don't have to, but just kind of sh maybe show a little bit of kind of what I typically do, right? Um, I check here, kind of do an exposure adjustment first. Uh, I might lift it just a tad. Um, yeah, then kind of a quick contrast adjustment. And then, you know, I want to come here and maybe check my mid-tone. Yeah, I do kind of like lifting that mid, or pulling some of the mid-tones up. And then here I might look for kind of a curve that I like best. Um, it's funny, here I am kind of liking those darker mid-tones, <laughs> the ones I just lifted. You know, when I, when I get to that point where I'm just kind of fighting against myself, I'm just like, call it good. Um, but yeah, I don't need to, you know, I, I might, with another photo, I might play here with the curve, but I kind of, I like really what it's, what it's got going on. You know, then kind of look at some of this, um, I think my default DNG is, yeah, that, that's a conservative sharpening. And then I used to touch clarity and structure more, but. Um, especially with 35 millimeter negatives, black and white, like this really has a lot of impact on the grain. So I, I don't, I kind of don't touch these much anymore. And then, and now I'm going to just do, you know, if there's any um, needing to do some healing. I don't think this was here yesterday. I don't heal as much as maybe others because I kind of like signs that show I really am shooting negatives. Um, that's really the only thing that's grabbing my eye. Maybe this corner there. All right. And then, you know, final, you know, maybe some just a little bit of tweaking of those highlights. I'm actually pretty okay with all of them. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe uh, just to show an example, just some like light dodge and burning, you know, my son's face a little bit, that side of his face, his hand a little bit more, top of the balloon. Maybe the stem of this pumpkin just a little bit. All right, that's good. And then I'm gonna go to my output and just check to see where my output folder is. And that's gonna be about it, boom process discord group Let's see uh, and then I told somebody I would make this video where did I do that 
Here it is. All right, so I'm going to stick it right there. Output. Do see where my bum, bum, bum. There it is. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it. That's my workflow. And yeah, <laughs> I like view scan. Okay. Hopefully that was valuable to at least one person. <laughs>